Hello and welcome back everyone. Thaddeus here. And I'm having to do something a little bit different than I normally do. Uh, for some reason, it seems that my microphone was muted while I was actually recording this episode and the next one. So I'm going to be kind of doing a play-by-play -play for what's going on. So in this episode here, uh, I'm taking care of some of what's going on in the nether with the over power generation that's being produced and going into the endothermic pump. So what I've done is I've grabbed my rolling machine and I'm going to go ahead and attach that to the uh, uh, steam engine that's in the nether. To do this, to have two things connected to it though, we need an energy transfer node from Extra Utilities reason for this is because without this I can't I won't have an input for energy going into uh, my extra utilities pipes so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what we need to make this uh, transfer node so it takes uh, four regular transfer nodes which we know requires the ender pearl and uh, some pipes and some smooth stone and some redstone and then we also need four gold ingots and a block of redstone so now that we have the energy transfer node I'm bringing an extra transfer pipe so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm sticking this into the bag of holding here along with the rolling machine and then we're gonna go ahead and run into the nether so all of this is in order to try and keep the uh, steam engine that is in the nether from overheating basically. The rolling machine will leach off uh, a little bit of power. Oh, and here I'm showing that I do have the uh, knapsack from Tinker's Construct. One of my uh, viewers had mentioned something about making one, but it doesn't have near as much storage as the bag of holding so I haven't really been using it. Uh, it's a little bit easier for me to access the bag of holding and it, it carries a lot more stuff. So the rolling machine, even when it's not working, it will use a little bit of the build craft energy. So that's why I've gone this route is to uh, try and just use up a little bit of that extra power so that hopefully it at least won't um, overheat quite so fast. So you can see here that we've got almost 10,000 buckets of lava. So the pump currently is not running in the nether, but it's not going to take much longer for this thing to fill up completely. So what I need to do is I need to empty it out. Well, how do you empty out a tank that has, uh, what, 9,000 uh, buckets of lava? Well, if I break a block here, it appears to be empty, but everything is still inside the only way to actually clear what's in it is to break this center block so once I break the center block on the bottom and only the center block on the bottom it resets the contents it, it basically all just disappears so now you can see that the tank is empty and we've got 12,544 buckets that we can stick back into it so now that we've got plenty of room to store that lava let's go ahead and go into the nether and try setting this up so that uh, you know we don't have to worry so much about that steam engine overheating and here we go so back in the nether and uh, you can see that I've been doing a lot of work on the cobblestone slabs there to keep this area clear of zombies and anything else that can spawn. Uh, they are still spawning a little ways over and eventually I'll probably get some more protection set up there just to totally eliminate uh, mob spawning there. So back down here we go we can see the area that I cleared out and then um, we can see that you know the this pump has been doing a good job it's just such a low energy pump I think it was designed with the redstone uh, engines in mind, which are from Buildcraft, and they are extremely low output. 
and they don't overheat. So uh, picking up the uh, setup that I've got and let's go ahead and grab our rolling machine our transfer energy transfer node and an extra transfer pipe. So we'll place the rolling machine down here and next we need our transfer pipe and this is the first time I've set this up. So we've got that attached to both of those. It obviously doesn't attach to a chunk loader because a chunk loader doesn't need any type of input. And then our energy node. So from here we need to attach our steam engine and then we need to attach our uh, ender tank that is providing our steam from the overworld. Just to try and keep it from taking up any more uh, room in my little house that I've built there, I'm going to go ahead and actually put it behind and above. And now we just need to attach the liquid transfer node to the bottom of it. Boy, this pick is fast. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this attached and cover up the uh, lava here. And let's go ahead and uh, pop down our lever and see how it works. So everything there is still working well. We can see that power is going through. So let's go ahead and see the power input into the rolling machine. Don't really see anything showing up, but now we can see that it's getting a little bit of power through the transfer pipes. These extra utilities pipes are absolutely amazing that they can transfer all of these different things. So you can see that we are getting some buildup in the steam engine. And a little bit of it is getting over to the rolling machine. So basically we just need to let this run and kind of see if it will balance itself out. Uh, we can see that the rolling machine is using up uh, all of the small amount of energy that it's getting. I don't know if it's just not requesting very much or not. You can see that the uh, energy transfer node doesn't really store much in the way of power. Here it's showing it as RF, which is the thermal expansion uh, redstone flux energy which is compatible with BuildCraft once you put it through some type of uh, connector. So right now I'm going to go ahead and search to see if there are any upgrades that might allow us to uh, provide some type of an increased buffer into the energy transfer node. So I'm looking at the speed upgrade here. Um, it really doesn't have any effect on power operations at all, only for moving items. And then we've got the mining upgrade, which can be used to make a cobblestone generator. And it can also be used to increase the speed with which it picks up lava from an infinite source, kind of like the aqueous accumulator, but faster. And then we've got the stacks upgrade, which allows the transfer pipes to move things in as large a block as can be moved. So if you've got multiple stacks, it'll move one stack at a time. Or it will increase the amount of liquid that's transferring. So again here, we're coming up, up pretty close on the 500 MJ uh, buffer on the rolling machine. So there's definitely quite a bit of extra energy being produced. If I were to put a recipe into the rolling machine, it would obviously use that much faster. And it is possible to do. Um, I could stick in some iron and turn it into... Uh, the uh, iron plates, or I could put steel in and turn it into steel plates, and then I could actually melt those plates back down. I know that the steel plates can be melted back down into a steel ingot, so I could just go ahead and keep doing that, um, but I believe to melt the steel ingot, or the steel plate into an ingot, I would need to actually stick it back into the blast furnace. So at this point, we're just going to go ahead and let that run and see how well that does. We're going to run around here a little bit. And um, 
Right now, we're going to go back to the overworld and check on the steam production to make sure that uh, there's plenty of fuel in there for the s steam engines. And it seems like most of the time when I come back, it's nighttime for some reason. So, as you can see, the farms are all doing very well. Uh, I don't anticipate any problems with those. They seem to be uh, really well balanced right now. So, I guess we're going to grab some charcoal here and make sure that there's plenty of fuel in this thing. So, let's go and see how quickly it's coming in. So, we're already up to 500 buckets of lava. And that thing just dumps it in so fast. It's, it's pretty crazy. If I wanted to use that to make uh, obsidian, maybe with an igneous extruder or something, it would, uh, it would be able to make a lot of obsidian. So, now that we've got some fuel in there to keep the steam going, let's go ahead and run back into the nether. I must say this is kind of strange to do this after I've already recorded everything. It's kind of like being a sportscaster, maybe. This is Howard Cosell. I know, most of you probably don't know who that is. That's okay. So let's go ahead and pop in here and take another quick look so we can see that we're getting the steam production. And it pretty much went down to zero. You can see that the MJ output was all the way down at 0.2. MJ per tick. So obviously it ran out of steam and then it started to lose the stored energy in its buffer. But that steam is quickly uh, going back up. You can see that the lava is transferring nicely. And at this point I think since it ran out of steam um, completely it's kind of kind of balanced itself out. Um, it looks like because it ran out of the steam. Uh, okay, so right here I'm looking at the chunks that are being uh, force loaded. You can see the, the blue ones are being force loaded. And that uh, appears to be coming from the endothermic pump. Because the endothermic pump will keep loaded all the chunks that have lava in it. The spot chunk loader should only be doing one chunk. So I went ahead and I pulled it up here to look and see, and I, what I'm seeing here still shows the endothermic pump is forcing those chunks to be loaded, but I don't think it force loads itself. So I may or may not test that in the future. I've still got the spot chunk loader, so I'm not really worried about it. And at this point here, you can see that the MJ output is a little bit less than maximum, but because it doesn't have an excess of steam, it, it doesn't seem to be building up too much of, a, of a, an overflow in its buffer. So we can see here that it's pumping the lava out nicely. And I still have no idea why it makes some of them cobblestone. Because all of those are source blocks, so I'm not sure really what's causing that. So, let's see what we need to do next. So, uh, I really must apologize for any of the uh, extended silences that may appear. Um, it's been uh, a day and a half since I recorded this, and I was about ready to upload it when I realized that hey, there's no audio from me. It's all just the game sounds. So here, uh, just taking a peek to see how far down it is grabbing lava. And it only seems to be doing one or two blocks at a time. So I believe that later it will start going deeper uh, and clearing out more of the lava that's underneath. But we're going to have to wait and see on that. So for now, we've got kind of a nice cleared out area there. And uh, for right now, we haven't 
I haven't really been seeing much in the way of mobs spawning there. So that's probably going to happen eventually, since they won't be able to spawn up above there where I put those slabs. They're going to probably be forced to spawn down below. So let's go back to the overworld, and let's, uh, let's take a look around at the base and see what's going on. So you can see these are the uh, diamond ore that I got for smelting the nether diamond ore. So we're, I'm, I just wanted to show you guys uh, that on camera. I got three ore, three regular diamond ore for the one nether diamond ore. And then I was able to place those and um, dig those up, and we got seven diamonds out of it. So that's not bad, considering it was only one block of nether diamond ore. And I know I need to do something with all those diamonds. I'll get there. Right now, I kind of feel good having that many diamonds just sitting around. So let's go ahead and go take a look at the quarry and see how this is going. So far, um, it's slow but steady progress. Because I did the maximum size of 64 blocks by 64 blocks, that's, that's a really large area. Uh, four chunks by four chunks. Uh, it's the same as the maximum size for a buildcraft quarry. Um, <clears throat> but this one here uh, doesn't have as much uh, power input coming into it. In the future, I need to either make some more of the uh, novice miners, or maybe I'll even uh, take some of those diamonds and make some of the uh, expert miners, just to go ahead and speed that up. Okay, so let's see what we need to do next. I guess we're going to go ahead and look into making a uh, an ancient warfare warehouse. The uh, the warehouse is similar to the applied energistics storage system in that it allows you to make storage blocks, some, something kind of like the disk drive units and the disk drives. There are three different sizes of storage upgrades. The first thing you have to do, though, is you build the warehouse block. You could consider that kind of like the, uh, what, the ME controller, uh, which is the interface into your storage system. The maximum size on the warehouse itself uh, is the 9x9x3. So you set your bounding boxes after when you have a clear area, and it allows you to put in the warehouse expansion blocks inside that 9x9x3 area. Or if you wanted to make it smaller, you could do that. Uh, in my original Ancient Warfare series, I was using a smaller warehouse with just three blocks, three of the uh, storage expansions in it, to feed directly out of uh, my quarry, just so that I could store a lot of items in a smaller area. So instead of stacking up a bunch of double chests that I would then need to go and organize, I just put a small warehouse system in. And then you can auto-feed into a warehouse with hoppers or pipes. And then you can also take out of it automatically as well if you needed to. Uh, either uh, I'm assuming that buildcraft pipes would work or uh, item ducts from thermal expansion. I know that hoppers will work, um, though it's just going to grab things at random. So unless you had some kind of a filter system, um, it would just grab whatever uh, it would grab randomly. So at this point here, I can't make the large warehouse expansions yet. So what we need to do is we need to do a little bit more research so that we can make the large. 
So here I'm showing the small, which is one chest and four oak planks. And I believe it provides uh, nine storage. So that's basically nine stacks. Uh, the medium warehouse uh, is a little bit more expensive with the two chests and some paper. And that one, I believe, holds 18 stacks. So what we need to do is we need to go and get the research necessary to make the large. So logistics is what uh, this falls under. You can see there's a lot of different things that come with that. So there's the large warehouse expansion. Um, this one is a little bit expensive. Uh, you can see there's also an industrial mailbox, which is very similar to a uh, an ender chest in that it allows you to send things even across dimensions. Uh, from one location to another. Uh, this one here is a little bit um, uh, more versatile in that it has five inputs and one output. Uh, we'll talk some more about that later. Um, but it is something that uh, has been incorporated into Ancient Warfare on the Project Red Dog server. Uh, we do have uh, some of that going. So let's go ahead and get this Logistics 5 research. We need 10 paper, 5 ink sacks, and 5 torches. That's not too bad. It does take uh, 3 minutes and 45 seconds to get done. So I don't want to just sit around here with that working, uh, with the research, you know, staring at the, at the page or whatnot. So uh, I think we'll go ahead and we'll set up a researcher and just kind of let him get to work and we'll go set up the uh, actual warehouse location inside the base. Okay. So let's go ahead and grab our resources to get the research done. So we're going to go ahead and select it there. We've got some paper. And we just need to grab some ink sacks and some torches. Which I should have sitting right here in this chest. There's our torches and some ink sacks. So five ink sacks and five torches. And just make sure you hit start. Um, let's see. Okay, so we've put down the uh, researcher so that he can do his job. And I just need to go ahead and let him know where he can eat in case he gets hungry while he's busy working. And let's go ahead and go back into the house. And we will go ahead and set up the warehouse building. So I am getting kind of low on ink sacks, so I'll probably need to set up an ink sack farm here pretty soon. I think I've got some more in storage inside the base here. But uh, for now, let's go ahead and figure out how we want to set this up. So right now we've got the storage system up above. So I'm going to go ahead and put this underneath. And for two reasons. Number one, I want it kind of out of the way. And uh, number two, I want to be able to attach it to my current sorting system. So once we've got this, you know, three blocks, and I just stuck that dirt there to kind of take the place of where I'm going to put the... Uh, block for the warehouse interface. So we need to go ahead and clear out a 9 by 9 by 3 area. So let's go ahead and get to that. And I'm trying not to use my hammer because its durability is really, really low. Uh, I did so much digging with it in the nether, clearing out nether rack. Um, that I I got it well below half, so I, I just want to give it some some time to repair itself and 
my regular pick here is definitely fast enough for what I'm working on. If I were going to clear out, you know, a full chunk or something, then uh, then I'd probably use it. So here, because I'm planning to eventually expand that tank one wider than it is now, I don't want these to be sitting right next to each other. I want to have a little bit of space between them in case I need it. And you can see that it's filling up quite quickly there. We've already got over 2,000 buckets of lava in there. So um, the interface block doesn't need to be centered at all. It can really be anywhere um, as long as it's adjacent to the bounding box that is set up for the warehouse itself. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and make some stone bricks, and um, then I'm going to go ahead and make a stone brick uh, outline, basically, for this. Kind of just because I can. Um, it definitely looks nice, and then this way here it will kind of signify, hey, you know, there's something in here. So when I'm digging around underneath my base uh, in the future, if I decide to do that, I'll know that that's some place that I don't want to dig up. So we're just going to go ahead and, and set up a kind of a, not, not exactly a foundation because it's not underneath, but just kind of a, a nice delineation so we know exactly where it's at. So also, if you notice in the uh, lower right-hand corner there, I'm getting really close to 50% on my air affinity. So uh, affinities are something that I haven't really done anything with using Ars Magica. But uh, I'm kind of interested to see what happens once I achieve 50% and, and gain an actual affinity bonus. So, just a little bit of basic uh, cleanup here. And then I'll show you guys how to set up the uh, warehouse. It's very much just like setting up any of the other ancient warfare structures. You're just going to use your left click or shift left click to set your bounding box. So, the, the difference between the left click and the shift left click is if you're doing a shift left click you're actually selecting the air block uh, above or next to where you're clicking and I prefer to use that method because I like to clear out everything and then when I'm setting up my bounding boxes it's very easy for me to see um, the outline of of where the area is that I'm selecting All right, let's go and get some more of this uh, stone brick set down. So we're almost done clearing out our 9x9 uh, nine nine area here. For some reason, 9x9 nine nine is such a popular size. Though I do find it kind of interesting that with the, a lot of the ancient warfare uh, civic structures, that you can actually set them at even numbers. The regular farms can go, I believe it's 10 by 10. And then you've got the wood farms, which can go, I believe, 16 by 16. So they can take up an entire chunk, uh, which, of course, again, is uh, an even number. So not everything in Minecraft is, uh, is designed to be kind of odd-based especially considering that chunks are even at 16 by 16. Okay, so one more section here to clear out, and then we'll go ahead and we'll set up our bounding box and our little uh, protective shell here. Builder's Wand for the win. A 
tell you, this builder's wand makes doing stuff like this so much easier. Just a couple of clicks, and it's done. So somehow I missed one back there in the corner. There we go. One more click. And there we go. Nice and easy. So now we need to go ahead and grab our warehouse block. And we need to go ahead and select how big we're going to make this. So we're going to select this air block here. And then you can see it can go up to three high. And then we're going to connect it to right here. And you can see the size indicator in the upper left-hand corner. So it's apparently 243 blocks or cubes. So now we're just going to hop on out of here. I keep expecting when I cast that spell that it, I'm going to jump. Sometimes I forget that it's actually a buff. So now when we look down here, you can see the bounding boxes for the area that it uh, kind of encapsulates. So right here, I'm just kind of showing where I'm going to be putting the uh, warehouse expansion blocks. So again, I, for some reason, think it's going to make me jump. So now we look in here, it's size 0, filled 0. So it has no storage. I can put items here into these, uh, into this 3x3 three three grid. That's its input buffer. But it's not actually stored in the warehouse. So let's go ahead and sleep to get rid of the rain here. And we are getting really, really close to wrapping this up here. We're actually a couple minutes past. So... At this point, let's go and see if our researcher is done with his job so that we can go ahead and start making the large warehouse expansion blocks. And it looks like he's still plugging away, so let's see how much longer he's got to go. He's got another two minutes. Why? Because it was raining. These guys, even if they're inside, won't work in the rain. They don't work at night in the dark, and they don't work in the rain. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and end the episode, and then I will go ahead and get this research completed, and then we'll start in the next episode uh, with that ready to go. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next episode.